Now we have a story time, right, Brother Dennis? Children, come up to the front. Now we should be good. Okay. My hair gets any thinner, I'll be wearing one of those to have something on my head. <laughs> what? What? You didn't see it? Reindeer. <laughs> what? <laughs> a couple of weeks ago we had Veterans Day. I've been thinking about that. Now I'm not a veteran. You know, I'll tell you that right foot. I'm not a veteran yet. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you why that's true, but uh, I will be eventually, I think. But uh, it wasn't that I didn't try. I was, when I graduated from high school, I actually wrote the draft board, because at that time they just draft you. Hey, you got to come to be in the Army or the Navy or something. And uh, they would just put you in didn't have a choice. And so I actually wrote them and said, hey, if I'm just graduating from high school. If I'm going to go in, I don't want to break up my college, you know, draft me now. But luckily, it was that time of the uh, world events, you might say, with Vietnam, that they were closing that down. My dad, he did kind of, he went, actually went down there and enlisted, and then re-enlisted, and re-enlisted, and re-enlisted. They didn't want him. He was, had some medical issues, and uh, they didn't want him. So that didn't work out for him. My cousin, now uh, going back, in high school, a church says, you know, you, if you're going to go into the military, try to be a non-combatant. In other words, don't carry a weapon. And so what they did is they had what they call medical cadet corps training. And so in high school, they opened up medical cadets. And so you practice like you're in the military. You learn how to march, say yes sir, no sir. And, but they had a lot of medical training in their first aid. And so we learned first aid in high school. And uh, my cousin did that. And when he went into, the, he got drafted into the Marines. And he goes, hey, I got a first aid certificate, you know. And I says, I'm not. I'm a non-combatant and all that. And they go. Well, then why are you here, you know, in the Marines? Because the Navy does all of our medical stuff for us. And he goes, well, that's where I'm drafted. And so they asked him if he would train with a gun, you know, at least for marching. He goes, yeah, I'll, I'll do that, you know, because they didn't, there's no medical in the Marines. So he did that. And they, well, do you mind shooting? No, I don't shooting. I'm not going to shoot at a people target. You know, they have the silhouettes, you know, of a person. He's supposed to shoot, you know, into the body, you might say. And uh, he wouldn't do that. He said, give me a round target. So what they did is they gave him the round targets they used for testing for, you know, sharpshooter, expert, or advanced, or just that you can shoot. And so they, he did that. And he's knocking the center out of targets all the time. And they go, I thought you we're non-combatant. He goes, that doesn't mean I'm not a hunter, you know. <laughs> so he was the best shot, so he, he actually was training his own class uh, how to shoot well. And uh, then they put him for office work and some other stuff. And uh, I was always impressed because when we picked him up one at Camp Pendleton one time, he had just got through running, I can't remember how long it was, it's, I think less than a uh, uh, 45 minutes or 55 minutes, something like that, eight miles that's a, with 90 pound pack on his back. And I, that impressed me. I go, wow, man, eight miles is long enough. You throw 90 pounds 
on you. That's tough work. That's really tough work. And uh, but they still didn't really know what to do with him because you know he's trained as a medic, he's non-combatant. But they figure out some way to use up his two years. I've had some other cousins go in there, and they a couple of them did very well in the military. Some of them didn't. Uh, Donna's niece called, and she's going with a or living with a uh, uh, man who's a was went to Afghanistan and was injured and healed up, went back and injured again, and uh, you know shot. And so he's a real true veteran, you know. But anyway, when you're out of the military, you're a veteran, and nowadays veterans are respected. <sighs> And uh, it wasn't back when I was a kid. I mean, they, they weren't, they were just kind of, oh, you're out of the military, so what? But now, now the, you know, people look up to them because that's where we get our freedom. Veterans are what gives us freedom. That's why we're not speaking Japanese or German. You know, it's because, because the military going in there risking their lives and giving their lives for that. And uh, I'm a, in the Revelation, they talk about another war. It says, and there was war in heaven. Michael, that's what God, and his angels fought against a dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. In verse 4, it says a third of this, a third of the angels in heaven fought and prevailed not, and was not, there's no place found in, in heaven for them. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth, and his angels with him. And that's that third of the angels. So they are all cast out. And where did they come? They came here. And uh, you know what? I'm not putting my glasses on. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was trying to read. I'm, I'm going cross-eyed here. There. Wrong glasses, I see. But anyway. Uh, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation, strength, and kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, that's Jesus, for the accuser of our brethren, the accuser of our brethren, that's us, is cast down, which accused them before God day and night, because he's in war, and we're in war. We're in the exact same war that the angels in heaven and God are in, and now we're involved with and they, over, they, and that's us again, the, and they, us, overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, that's a Jesus, and by the word of their, that's us, by the word of our testimony, we overcame Satan, and they loved not their lives unto death. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and the seal, excuse me, and the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath. And when you have wrath, you get, you're in war. You're, you're hating everybody and everything because he knoweth he has but a short time. Jesus will come, be coming back in a short time. It's been 6,000 years, but it's still a short time for God. And when, we, when he comes and takes us home, we are all going to be veterans of one of the biggest wars that's ever been fought in the universe. We we're going to be veterans, and people will go and go, Matt, what was it like? And you go, it's all worth it, because God saved us, and it's Amen. all worth it. And we'll all be veterans. And, and that, I don't know how much respect and special privileges that will give us. I have no clue, because God has not given us in our mind, with, it, with the imagination we have, he hasn't given it into our mind of what glories he has waiting for us. If we just continue in that fight, we came and stay engaged in the fight we're in right now. Bow our heads for prayer. You had a question. I'm sorry. What? Um, was those like circle targets one of those like um, like the target side? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a it's just a, a target was about that big, but there was circle, circle, circle. And they have a little X in the middle. And the trick is to try to split that X. Dear Jesus, I want to thank you for holding your hands through the war we're in, for taking care of us, 
and giving us a promise of eternal life and eternal presence with you. And I just want to thank you for that and for all you've done. Thank you for the Sabbath. For Jesus' sake, amen. Come back. Come back.